are coming to share the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Perhaps the most famous verse of the Bible is John 3.16. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world, God loves the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The gentleman from Purple Haze, MK, doesn't want us giving the gospel because his business is making you unwell. His business is revolved around making you unwell. Our business is about getting you saved by the blood of the, the blameless Lamb, Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, those of us who abide in God's Word, those of us who study the Bible, can tell you that we are living in the last days that have been prophesied for thousands of years. These prophecies have been prophesied and taught and handed down through the Bible for thousands of years. We can see the signs of the times that are everywhere strewn around us. The Bible has been warning us of this day. Jesus Christ, the one and only Lord and Savior, came the first time to preach, to tell us his gospel message. He came to lay down his own life to pay for our sins. Do you realize that the Son of God was nailed to the cross to pay for each and every one of our sins? Nailed to the cross. Let that sink in, ladies and gentlemen. God, Jesus Christ, is God manifest in the flesh. 1 Timothy 3.16 tells us. When Jesus Christ came into this world, he came knowing that he was going to willingly lay down his life so that we could live and live more abundantly. Our Lord and Savior knew what was in store for him. God loves us that much, ladies and gentlemen. He loves us such that he came and willingly laid down his life so that we can live. The Bible tells us that we're all sinners. Romans 3.10 says, There is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 6 Sorry, Romans 3.23 says, We all come short of the glory of God. We're all sinners. I'm a sinner. My wife is a sinner. A sin is simply transgressing God's law. Whenever we do something that transgresses God's law, it is a sin. We compile these sins. It becomes known as a sin debt. Like all debts. Payment must be made. As with all debts, payments must be made. In the payment, the Bible tells us for sin, the wages of sin is death. Now the debt that we're talking about is both the physical death, the Bible tells us again it is appointed unto men to die once, and then the judgment. We're all going to die. We're all going to face the judgment of our Creator. Whether we believe or whether we're in unbelief, we're going to meet our Creator. The Bible tells us that every knee will bow to Jesus Christ. Every knee will bow to Jesus Christ. Whether you are a believer or not a believer, every knee is going to bow to Jesus Christ. It's better to bow the knee to Jesus Christ now while you live because if you call out to Him, if you ask Him to forgive you your sins, He will do so. He is just and merciful and He will forgive you your sins if you come to Him in faith. God loves you. God truly loves each and every one of us. He's calling us back home. God is calling us back home, but we can't come to Him unless we come to Jesus Christ in faith. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We can have that everlasting life the moment we put our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. If we don't put our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, John 3.18 tells us exactly what we can expect. He tells us in John 3.18, if we're not in Christ, we're condemned already. Now what does that mean? What does it mean to be condemned? It means to be condemned in our sins. It means we're on our way to hell. It means we're on our way to eternal perdition, torment, first in hell, the holding place, and then we're to be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, which is called the second death. We came out to Milton Keynes today, folks, a place we've never been to. We don't know any of you, but we came out of love. We want to share the good message, the good news of Jesus Christ. We don't want anybody to perish. We don't want you to die in your sins. God loves you. God loves each and every one of us, and He's calling us back home. Just like John the Baptist was calling people to repentance around the River Jordan, we're here in Milton Keynes today calling you to repentance, calling you back home. But there's only one way to get back home, and it's through Jesus Christ our Lord. John 14, 6, chapter 14, verse 6 says, these are Jesus Christ's own words. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me, Jesus Christ. Do you understand the import of that, ladies and gentlemen? Jesus Christ, in his own words, is telling us he is the only way. I am the truth, the life, the way, the truth, the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me, Jesus Christ. It means there's no other way. Satan's world, this world that we're living in that's being controlled by Satan and his minions, will tell you that there are many paths up the mountain, that so long as we are good people, we can go to heaven. But the Bible, God's Word, tells us the exact opposite. God's Word tells us that we are all sinners. This gentleman over here doesn't like that I'm preaching the Gospel. But here's the thing. Not you, no, not you. Him. But here's the thing. We have an express legal right in public to preach the Gospel. Um, we have an express legal right to preach the Gospel. And so we're going to preach the good... We're going to preach the news, the good news of the... the Bible, God's Word, even if Purple Haze, MK Vaping doesn't like it. This is the good news, ladies and gentlemen. You know how you can know that the Bible is true? Do you know how you can tell the Gospel message is true? If I were out here speaking about Santa Claus, nobody would object. If I were out here talking about the Prophet Muhammad, nobody would object. If I were out here talking about the Buddha, Nobody would object, but people object Hello? to hear you, Jesus you, Christ. No, I can't do it on the side of the market. Folks, we have, we have the express right to preach the gospel, and we're going to preach the gospel. Jesus Christ is the good news. If you haven't been abiding in God's word, we suggest you start with the book of John. The book of John gives the gospel so clearly. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have, have everlasting life. <laughs> everlasting life is something that we can barely begin to wrap our heads around. Everlasting life is life that never ends. Everlasting life is the good news. It is the salvation that Jesus Christ came into this world to offer us. Most of us don't recognize that we need salvation. Most of us don't understand that we have acquired a sin debt. 
I used to be one of those people. For three and a half decades, I was an ardent atheist. But I was an ardent atheist because I didn't know the truth. I didn't understand that I needed salvation. I didn't understand what salvation was really all about. I was confirmed in the Anglican Church as a boy. I was a member of the Anglican Communion. But I didn't know why I needed salvation. The gospel was never explained to me as a boy. It was never explained to me as an adult. The Church of England didn't teach me the truth. The world did not teach me the truth. My schooling system did not teach me the truth. The university system did not teach me the truth. The only place where we get the truth, ladies and gentlemen, is in God's Word. The Bible is the truth. The Bible gives us the truth that the world is just not going to give us. The Bible, God's Word, tells us exactly why we need salvation. We need salvation, ladies and gentlemen, because we have all sinned. We have turned away from God. We have turned away from our Creator. We have gone and followed our own path. We have followed man's ways. But man's ways are foolishness, the Bible tells us. Man's ways are foolishness. King Solomon, who is described in God's word as the wisest person who ever lived, fell into grievous sin. He thought that he would really try to get his head around what this world was all about. He tried everything. He had great wisdom, but he fell into grievous sin. The Bible told the Israelites to steer clear of the Canaanite women, those who were not Israelites. The Bible says, don't turn unto strange women. King Solomon turned unto strange women, and he fell away from God. It was only late in King Solomon's life that he realized the truth is that we must fear God and follow his ways. He realized that worldly wisdom is um, as dust. He says it's um, vanity of vanities, world's, the world's wisdom, man's wisdom, all of our works in this world is vanity of vanities and vexation of spirit. Vanity of vanity and vexation of spirit. That means, ladies and gentlemen, that if we're not in Christ, if we're not fearing God, if we're not putting all of our faith, all of our trust, in Jesus Christ for our salvation, it means that everything we do in this world is as dust. Whatever we are putting great importance on, whether it's our career, whether it is our family, whether it's money, whether it's prestige, it's all as dust. When we pass from this world, we will find out that everything we did, if it was not done for God, if it was not done in the name of Jesus Christ, it will turn out to be vanity of vanities, vexation of spirit. It means it is dust, ladies and gentlemen. Our lives will be of no import. But here's the deal. Here's the bad news. The bad news is that when we sin against God, when we transgress our Creator's laws, 
We have a sin debt that must be paid. Romans 6, 23 tells us the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, He is our Savior. He's the Savior of the world. He paid for our sin debt through His death on the cross. Jesus Christ is God made manifest in the flesh. 1 Timothy 3.16 tells us. Jesus Christ is God made manifest in the flesh. He came into this world willingly to lay down His life so that all of us could live. We all have a sin debt. God requires that that sin debt be paid. The Bible tells us there's only one way to pay that sin debt, and it's through faith in Jesus Christ. If we don't come to Christ in faith and in truth, it means that that sin debt is going to be left unpaid. When that sin debt is left unpaid and we die the physical death, the bad news is our souls live on for an eternity. We have mistaken this body as who we are. But the true we, the true person, is the soul within. That soul is going to live on in one of two places. The Bible is clear. That soul will either go to the Father and live with our Creator in a holy, righteous world, or we will spend an eternity in perdition. That means an eternity in hell. That means suffering for all of eternity. Suffering that we cannot even begin to imagine here in this world. That's why we're here today, folks, because we love you. We care for you. God loves you. God loves every one of you, and He's calling you back home. God is calling you back home through the Gospel. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Are you going to put your faith in Jesus Christ today? Now is the time of salvation, folks. Today is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow. Not next week. Because the Bible tells us in John 3.18, if we have not come to Christ, then we are condemned already. Quote, condemned already. Do you want to be condemned in your sins, ladies and gentlemen? Or do you want to be, do you want to receive God's free gift of everlasting life? That's the question. It's the most important question. The most crucial question you could ever answer. We cannot answer it for you. We can share the gospel message with you. But we cannot answer that question for you. Every single person must decide for themselves. Are they going to accept the free gift of God? If we want to accept it, all we need to do is call out, Dear Lord, please save me. I believe that you are the Son of God. And in that very moment, Jesus Christ is just and merciful. He's a loving God. He will reach down and save us the moment that we call out to Him in faith and in truth. We can just go into our bedroom. We can be in a private place and we can just call out, Dear Lord, please save me from my sins right now, today. I believe that you are the Son of God. 
I know that you came into this world to pay for my sins, and I'm asking you, dear Lord, please forgive me. Please forgive me my sins. And in one moment, Jesus Christ will wash your sins clear away. That's all we have to do to come to him. It's so easy. In fact, it's so easy that people choose not to believe it. And so they go to their death condemned in their sins. Even though Jesus Christ paid for them. He's paid a debt for us all. But if we don't ask him to apply that, that forgiveness to us, then we perish in our sins. And we spend the rest of eternity in hell. The Bible says... In Jesus Christ's own words, these are Jesus Christ's own words, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. That tells us in very clear language that even a child can understand. There's only one way to heaven, folks. There's only one way to reach the Father. It's through acceptance of Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior. It means putting all of our faith, all of our trust in Jesus Christ alone for the forgiveness of our sins. It means there's no other way, folks. No matter what the world has been telling you, no matter what your school teachers might have said, no matter what your professor of religion might have told you, no matter what your priest or pastor might have said, no matter what your imam might have told you, no matter what your guru says, the Bible tells us there's only one way to the Father, and it it's through Jesus Christ, our Lord. I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me, Jesus Christ. What if I believe in Muhammad and Allah. What if I believe that Jesus is in the Quran and I do believe in him, what would you say to that? What if I tell you I'm clean, I have no sin, do I still have to go to heaven? Can I tell you what the Bible Thank says? You. So, no, okay, 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 so you want to ask me a question but you don't want to hear the answer. Go then, go on. Okay, the Bible says there is none righteous, no, not one. The Bible also says if we say we have no sins, we deceive ourselves. We all have sins. You Here's are judging the, everybody. No, I'm not judging. I'm, you are making everybody guilty. We are guilty. I'm not making you guilty, brother. You are well, guilty you in your sins. You're shouting at the people. I'm calling people to repentance out of love. Yeah, but all these people within their own spirit. Let me, right. let me ask you a question, it's brother. Clean. Let me ask you a question. If all you people, if I knew that there was a tsunami coming down that road and we were all going to be washed away, would it be a hateful message to tell you, brothers, there's a tsunami coming down the road? That's or, human. Or, that's human. or would it, or would it be humanity. a loving, or would it be a loving that's message? That's humanity. That's not religion. That's humanity. I'm you not, see, brother. You, you talk about religion. I'm here to talk about salvation. They are worlds apart. But you just said, you just Religion said, and you salvation just are worlds you just apart. Said, you just said, well, Brother, do you believe in Muhammad? Yes, I do. Okay. So, excuse me, you just said what every man said to you. That's right. You just insulted Islam. Can I can I ask you a question? No, no, where is the no, pro where no, is the Prophet no, no, Muhammad? Because you just because the Prophet Muhammad is the last one that Allah brought his from. Okay, from, where is he? From Adam, where is Jesus? Jesus Christ reigns. Jesus Muhammad, Christ lives. Muhammad lives in people's spirit and heart. Can I ask you a question? Is Muhammad is Muhammad in, is Muhammad in the grave? Okay, there I address my case, ladies and gentlemen. Muhammad is in the grave. I rest my case. No, 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 you haven't seen him. Muhammad believes in Jesus. Does he? He's in the Quran. He, he, why, do you, why, why the Bible stops at Jesus? And why do you don't believe in Muhammad? And you know Muhammad, you know Muhammad existed. He was the first one and the last. Thank you, sir. After him, there is no prophet. You insulted, you insulted Islam here. 
I'm not concerned yeah, about Islam. Just, he just said, there's a matter what the Imam says. I'm not concerned about Islam. Do you know why? Listen, why I you, think you've been, you, you are really why ignorant. You, you are really an atheist, ignorant. No, no, hold on a second. I'm very, very upset about what you just said. I didn't hear you. I'm talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah, but you don't, you believe in a different Jesus Christ. I don't, I don't, well, I don't have to pray him, but it is in my Quran. Yes. And I believe I know in him. I know he's so in your Quran. So you cannot deny me that. Yeah. I know he's a messenger of God. He was indeed. At, in his time. He was indeed a messenger Thank of you. God. But here's the difference. He is God. The Prophet Muhammad is a prophet. That's your opinion. And he's not the son of God either. God. Go, go, don't have, Sir, don't have children. if you want to follow the dead prophet, be my guest. I'm following the living Christ. And no, sir, I'm going to preach the gospel publicly because you know what? My living prophet, Jesus Christ, told me to preach the gospel unto all the world and to raise up disciples and to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's what I'm going to do. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. We know that the Quran speaks of Jesus, but they speak of another Jesus. They speak of a Jesus Christ that didn't get crucified. They speak of a Jesus Christ that didn't ra raise himself from the dead. It's a false Jesus. You can't go to God the Father through worshiping a false Jesus. Muslims worship a false Jesus. They acknowledge Jesus Christ as a prophet, but he was more than a prophet. He was the Son of God. 1 Timothy 3.16 For God so loved, sorry, that God was manifest in the flesh. Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. That's speaking of Jesus Christ. He was not just a prophet. He was God. He is God. He is the Alpha and He's the Omega, the beginning and the end. The Prophet Muhammad is dead in Medina. Jesus Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Are you going to put your trust in a dead prophet or are you going to put your trust in the living Christ, the Son of God? I'll leave all of you to answer that question for yourself. I know where my heart is. I love you. I'm trying to bring the good news to you. It's harsh for some of you to hear, but don't follow a dead prophet. Follow the living Christ. Put your faith in him. Call out to him tonight and say, Dear Lord, please forgive me my sins. I know that you are the Son of God. I'm putting all of my faith, all of my trust in you, and importantly, in you alone. Call out to him tonight in the privacy of your own room. You don't need a, a church. You don't need a, a priest. You don't need a pastor. All you have to do is call out to Jesus Christ and say, Dear Lord, show me your love. Strengthen me. Give me strength. Con confess your sins. Ask for forgiveness. And he is loving and just and he will forgive you your sins in that very moment do you know what else he'll give you the free gift of everlasting life do you know what else he'll also give you the holy spirit to dwell within yourself he's also called the holy ghost the holy spirit the spirit of god the spirit of truth he's also called the comforter because he comforts us when we have the holy ghost within us we have spiritual discernment. Without the Holy Ghost, we have no spiritual discernment. And the Bible tells us in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 that there are those who receive the love of the truth and there are those who do not receive the love of the truth. We go around Britain and we share the good news because we care about those who have the love of the truth. Those who have not the love of the truth, there's nothing we can do for you. But for those who care about the truth, those who want to come home to their Creator, those who recognize that there must be something more to life than this broken world, this broken existence, 
We're calling you home. We're calling you home through the gospel of Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I pray that all of you at this bus stop today go home and call out to Jesus Christ. Ask him to reveal himself to you. Ask him to reveal his love. Ask him to forgive your sins. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. I really appreciate the fact that you've been listening. I know I've made some of you upset, but that's the price that prophets have to pay. Those of us who are going to preach the truth, we know you're going to have to get upset. But it's the good news. And unless we talk about the bad news, the good news doesn't make any sense. Dear Lord, we praise you. We lift you up. We thank you for laying down your life so that we could live. Dear Lord, we thank you for this precious opportunity to share the good news with the people of Milton Keynes. We know that the world doesn't want to hear the message, but I know as well that some of you care about the truth. Some of you are concerned about meeting your maker. And here's the deal. We're all going to meet him. The Bible tells us that every knee will bow to Jesus Christ. Every knee will bow to Jesus Christ. The question is, in this world, are we going to bow to knee in this world? Are we going to acknowledge him as the Son of God? Or are we going to acknowledge him after this lifetime, in which case we're condemned in our sins already? What's it going to be, folks? Every single one of you has to answer that question. Are you going to bow the knee to Jesus Christ today? Or are you going to bow it when you come and you meet your maker? We either bow the knee today on our way to eternal perdition. Those are the only two choices. We each have to make that decision. Do we want to be with our loving Creator? Do we want to acknowledge the truth? Or are we going to live a lie? It all comes down to that question. Do we love the truth or do we love the lies? The Bible shows us that in these last days, many people are going to believe the lies. Many people are going to choose death. Many people are going to choose perdition, condemnation. And we're out here today begging you, imploring you to come to the truth in Christ Jesus who says in his own words, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Is there anybody here who wants to hear the gospel message? Is there anybody here who cares about the eternal state of their souls? Is there anybody who wants to prepare themselves so that when they pass this world, we know that we're safe in God's hands? God loves each and every single one of us. He's calling us back home. And he tells us in no uncertain terms that there's only one way to be with the Father. And it's through Jesus Christ, the Lord, his Son, his only begotten Son. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever, any one of us, whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Read it for yourselves. John, the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 16. I'm not making these things up, folks. It's in the Bible for you to read. We all have to make a decision. 
John 14, 6. Jesus Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. That means there's only one way, ladies and gentlemen. No matter what the media tells you, no matter what the political correctness of the day informs you of, there's only one way. God's Word is true. God's Word tells us there's only one way. We each have to make a decision. Are we going to accept God's Word, or are we going to accept the Word of this world, the lies of the devil, that tell us that there are many ways up the mountain, but the Bible, God's Word tells us there's one way, and it's through Jesus Christ. Today is the day of salvation, ladies and gentlemen. I implore you to call out to Jesus Christ and ask for forgiveness. Just say, dear Lord, I believe that you are the Son of God. Forgive me of my sins. Call out to him today, folks. Ask him for forgiveness. Our God is a loving God. He's a merciful God. He would that none of us would perish, but that we would all come to repentance. So let's come to repentance, folks. Let's call out to Jesus Christ in the privacy of our own home. Today, today is the day of salvation, because tomorrow might be too late. If we die in our sins, we are stuck. There's nothing we can do. We will die in our sins. Our sin debt will not have been paid by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. And it means we're going to spend the rest of eternity in hell. It's not a politically correct idea, I know. I'm not here to give you political correct platform. I'm here to preach the truth. The truth that God's Word gives us. God promised to preserve His Word for all generations. God promised to preserve His Holy Word for all generations. And He tells us in His Word that we are without excuse. We know in our heart of hearts that this lie about evolution in the Big Bang is a bunch of malarkey. We know that we are marvelous beings. Look at the beauty, at least the former beauty, for those of you who are a little bit older like me. Look at the beauty of the world as it used to be. Look at all the beautiful birds, the fish, the wildlife. Look at the marvelous things that science can't explain about our own bodies. That lie about evolution, the lie about the Big Bang Theory is just a lie of the devil. Everything in this world exists to pull us away from the truth. The devil doesn't care how you come away from the truth. He only cares that you do come away from the truth. He might pull you away from the truth through pornography, through putting your heart on your career and your family and money. There's so many ways that the devil can divert you away from the truth. And the world is using every single one of them. The media and the school system and the university system, everything is working in conjunction to divert us from the truth. Jesus Christ is the truth. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by Him. I can tell that you guys are listening. I really appreciate that. know that we can't do anything but to share the gospel with you. I can't make the decision for you. All I can try to do is give you the word of God. Then it's down to us. Are we going to call out to Jesus Christ and ask him to forgive us? Let me tell you another way why, how, the, how Satan diverts us from the truth. The established churches divert us from the truth. The Catholic Church, the Church of England, all these established churches exist to steer us away from the truth. They're not giving the real gospel that's contained in the Bible. The gospel in the Bible is super clear. I just gave it to you. 
in one verse, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. He loves us, folks. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, i.e. Jesus Christ, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That is the Gospel in one verse. That is the truth that the world is not going to give you. We're only going to get that in God's Word or from a preacher who's sharing God's Word. And that's why we're here today, folks. It's not complicated. It's simple. We just have to call out to Jesus Christ and ask Him to forgive us. And in that very moment, He will save us. He is just and merciful. He's a loving God, and He would that none of us should perish, but that we would all come to repentance. How many people here know Jesus Christ? Is there anybody here who is in Christ? Is there anybody here who is a disciple of Jesus Christ? A brother in the faith? Okay, well I've told you everything you need to know. All you have to do is call out to Him, man. Call out to Him in the privacy of your own home. You say, Dear Lord, please save me. It's very simple. We don't need the church. We just need to accept Jesus Christ. We need to pick up the Bible. We need to hear from God through, through the Bible. Through God's Word. Through God's Word we will find out what God wants us to do. Instead of listening to the world, we can listen to God through His revealed Word. God tells us to live a life in Christ. God tells us to be holy and perfect. But here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. Salvation comes by God's grace through faith. And God tells us that not even that faith is from ourselves. He is giving us this free gift, but we need to come to Him and just say, Lord, I believe You are the Son of God. Please forgive me. And if we confess with our mouths the Lord Jesus, if we believe in our hearts that God hath raised Him from the dead, the Bible tells us in the book of Romans, chapter 10, that we shall be saved. It's a done deal. So we're not going to work our way to heaven. It's not through our good deeds. We're going to come to heaven through faith in Jesus Christ. And through His righteousness, we can have that righteousness imputed to us. So I implore you, ladies and gentlemen, call out to Jesus Christ today. Ask Him to forgive you your sins. Pick up your Bible and begin to read God's Word. Begin to study and to learn what God wants of us. Pick up the King James Bible. It is the true Bible in the English language. Thank you so much for listening, ladies and gentlemen. Have a great afternoon. Call upon Jesus Christ while you, while you might do so. Today... Today is the day of salvation, for tomorrow might be too late. We pray for everybody on this bus. Dear Lord, in Jesus Christ's mighty name, we pray for everybody on this bus who heard that message today. We pray that you soften their hearts. We pray that you soften their minds. Help them to be humble, dear Lord, and to call out to Jesus Christ for their salvation today. And we pray in Jesus Christ. Amen. Is there anybody here who wants to hear the gospel message? Is there anybody here who needs healing? Is there anybody here who would like us to pray for you? Or to pray for a loved one? Do any of you need help? Are any of you feeling lost, depressed? Many people in 2020 are seeking solace through a bottle of alcohol. Many people in 2020 are seeking solace through anti-depression medication.
Many people are trying to entertain themselves to death through video games and watching television non-stop. But we all know that that hole is not going to go away. That hole is not going to go away unless we are in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. He's still relevant in the year 2020. In fact, he's going to be coming soon to condemn this world. Jesus Christ is coming again to pour out his righteous wrath upon this wicked world. Those of us who read the Bible, who have not been diverted by wicked false churches, know the truth. The truth is available for all of us to see. The truth is available for all of us to read when we pick up the Bible and we begin to abide in God's Word. You know, we can download the Bible onto our smartphones for free. There's no excuse. There's a great Bible app called Tecarta, T-E-C-A-R-T-A. When you download that free app, you'll get the King James Bible. It gives you everything you need, ladies and gentlemen. I encourage you, download it and read the book of John. John, read the book of John. Okay. Did everybody hear that? Did everybody hear about that Bible app that I was just talking about? It's called Takarta, T-E-C-A-R-T-A. There's a million Bible apps. That just happens to be the one that we use and we like it. It's free. If you download Takarta, you'll get the King James Bible for free. It comes with the application. And we can all begin to read God's Word for ourselves. You don't have to trust people like me. Mankind will lie to you. The media lies to us all the time. The politicians lie to us all the time. The churches lie to us. The Bible tells us the truth. And so we don't have to trust man. You don't have to trust me. I don't want you to trust me. I could be a liar just like everybody else. What I want you to do is download the Bible onto your smartphone today and start reading the book of John. Start reading the Gospel according to John. It's the fourth book of the New Testament. And you'll then begin to realize who the man Christ Jesus is was and is. He is God made manifest in the flesh. He is our Savior. But I want you to finish and go back and start it again. You can't read the book of John too much. Then go back and read the whole of the New Testament. But most importantly, drop onto your knees today, ladies and gentlemen, and ask Jesus Christ to save you. Ask Him to forgive you your sins, and He will do so. Please do that today, ladies and gentlemen. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Call out to Him today, ladies and gentlemen. 
Today is the day of salvation. Call out to Jesus Christ in the privacy of your own bedroom. You don't need a church. You don't need a priest. Call out to Jesus Christ and say, Dear Lord, please save me. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died on the cross to pay for my sins. Please forgive me my sins today, right now, dear Lord. Strengthen me. Give me faith. Help me to feel your love and your presence in my life. And he will show you his love. He will show you his presence. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 14:6 says in Jesus Christ's own words, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is God. He is the Son of God. He is God. He is the Alpha. He is the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. Excuse me, my name is Sean. What's yours? My name is Jan. Does yeah. Jesus Christ do anything practical to help these poor people who are sleeping on the street? What a blasphemous question. Jesus Christ Jesus Christ is the creator of all things, the Bible tells so us. He created all these homeless Jesus, people and their, and their no. souls. I would love to talk with you about that. I would love you guys to do something practical to help people. That's Just exactly what we're doing. That's well, exactly what we're doing. Get, get your talk That's to because you don't know Jesus Christ. Show us some love. Show us some love and treat them like humans. That's what we're doing. What are you doing today to show them some love? Well, actually, I've done something very practical. What have you done? I've helped that's wonderful. Thank you so much for doing that. But do you know what? The prophet Isaiah tells us in chapter 64, verse 6, that all of our righteousnesses, that means all of our good deeds, are as filthy rags in God's eyes if we're not in Christ. We are all for feeding. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, we're all for feeding the sick. We're all for ministering to people. I understand. People are starving. Yeah. What good is it about having salvation if they're starving and they don't want to eat? Can You're nice and warm. Look at you. You've got a lovely new warm coat. You've got a Thank fleece you. on. You're a lovely warm coat. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You should be sharing your good with. You should be sharing your gifts. And that's not up here. That's the fact that you are warm. Praise the Lord. Be now, now I noticed that once you've spoken to me, now you're going to walk away and turn your back. Are you going to listen to me? I, I was. I, I, are you going to listen to yeah, me, yeah, or is it a, or is it a one-way street? Well, it was a one-way street. No, no, no. I'm listening to you. Okay. I haven't heard any answers. Okay. Except to praise the Lord. Okay. I was an atheist for three and a half decades. I was an ardent, outspoken atheist, probably like yourself. Yeah, I rejected God. I rejected Jesus Christ. But you know what? I was brought to the truth. So now I can see things from both sides. I just you're think you're Sorry, is this your turn to speak or is it my turn? No, you've been speaking a lot. I've been listening to you all the time. If your God is compassionate... Your God is compassionate. Human. There's only one God. He, he's well, making I your heart beat right now. I your don't God see is making your, your God. Mind. Your God is making your heart beat right now. Then your interpretation of God. No, it's not I my don't interpretation. See compassion in it. I just don't see compassion in it. It's because and you I don't. Away yeah. Because I don't have any more okay. Time. Well, I'm just going to preach publicly then, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible tells us that some of us will not have the love of the truth. Some of us receive the love of the truth, and some of us receive not the love of the truth. Those who receive not the love of the truth are not going to listen. Those who have not received the love of the truth are just not interested in hearing the truth. 
is where I used to be, in a way. I was an ardent atheist, as I just told this woman. For 35 years, I rejected the God of the Bible. But there was something different about me. I did care about the truth. I searched for the truth. I hunted down the truth. I looked, I looked for the truth in all sorts of places. I read. I turned to books. I read and I read. I turned to meditation. I turned to yoga. I turned to doing all sorts of things. I turned to the study of philosophy and thought, okay, maybe the study of philosophy will show me the truth. So I studied Western philosophy and classics. It didn't show me the truth. So I studied Eastern philosophy and classics. It didn't show me the truth. There was only one book left. There was only one repository of truth left and it was the Bible. And when I came back to the Bible, when I picked it up and truly began to read it, and to abide in it, then I realized this is not a truth, this is the truth. Then I realized that every false religion, every single false religion, is a works-based salvation. Every single religion, including false Christianity, is a works-based religion. There's only one religion that sets itself apart, and that's true Christianity. It's not about our work, it's about having faith in Jesus Christ. It is only through belief, through faith in Jesus Christ, that we can reach the Father. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus Christ himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me, Jesus Christ. That is the truth. It's a wonderful thing to feed the hungry. It's a wonderful thing to put clothes on people's backs. It's a wonderful thing to help our neighbor. It's what Jesus Christ would have us do. But there's something even more important. It's even more important that we minister the gospel to these people. And they're not mutually exclusive. The woman I was just speaking to makes it sound like it's this or that. But it's not mutually exclusive. You see, we can feed the we can feed the poor, we can help people, but we can also give them the gospel of Jesus Christ. They're both required. The food keeps the keeps us alive physically, but it's only the gospel that keeps us alive eternally. It's not going to do us any good to hear the gospel if we're dead. So we need food. We need warmth. We need people to care for us. But we need to hear the gospel so that we can live and live more abundantly. God's free gift is the gift of everlasting life. There's only one way we, re we can receive it. When somebody gives us a gift, we don't have to work for it, do we, ladies and gentlemen? When somebody gives us a birthday gift or a Christmas gift, we don't have to work for it. That's why it's called a gift. And we cannot work for our salvation. We cannot work to receive God's free gift. We just have to accept it in simplicity as a gift, without works. We have to put trust in Jesus Christ for our salvation rather than to put trust in our works. Our works condemn us. As I tried to speak to this woman, she wasn't interested in hearing me, but in the prophet Isaiah, 
The Old Testament prophet Isaiah in chapter 64, verse 6 says that all of our righteousnesses are as filthy rags in God's eyes. That means all of our good deeds are as filthy rags in God's eyes. What God is telling us through the prophet Isaiah is that we cannot work our way to heaven. If those works are not grounded in Jesus Christ, then they are as filthy rags. The church will tell you otherwise. The Church of England will tell you that you need to be a good person. But the Church of England is teaching something that is contrary to the Word of God. The Church of England keeps the Bible from their parishioners. The Church of England teaches a false gospel. I was confirmed in the Anglican Church. I was raised in the Anglican Church. My mother is nearly 82 years. She spent her whole life in the Anglican Church. And yet she is ignorant of the Bible. She is ignorant of what the Gospel is. She thinks that you need to be a good person to go to heaven. But that's what every false religion thinks. Every false religion, including false Christianity, makes us think that we can just be a good person and go to heaven. But the Bible tells us explicitly, there is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3.10 The Bible also tells us explicitly, a few verses later in Romans 3.23, that we all come short of the glory of God. The Bible tells us that if we say we have no sin, that we are liars and deceivers, and that we deceive ourselves. In other words, we're all sinners. In other words, we're not going to go to heaven through our good works or our innate goodness, because the Bible tells us that we're all sinners. It's not good enough. God demands righteousness. The only way that we can be righteous is through the righteousness of Jesus Christ. It's only when we put all of our faith, all of our trust in Jesus Christ and His righteousness that we can have our sins forgiven. We're all in the same predicament, ladies and gentlemen. If we've not come to Christ, we're all in the same predicament. We have a sin debt that must be paid. We have a sin debt that will be paid. It'll be paid through Jesus Christ and all that He did on the cross to be a propitiation for our sins, or it'll be paid by our eternal condemnation in hell. It's not a popular message, I know that. We are out here preaching, it, preaching that message knowing it's not a popular message. I didn't used to believe it myself. I was an ardent atheist for 35 years. I was an ardent atheist. I was a progressive political organizer. I was a progressive political organizer. I used to organize people thinking that the solution to this world must be in politics. It must be in creating a world that is conducive to goodness and justice. But I was wrong. This world is going to come to an end soon, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible tells us very clearly, it shows us very clearly that we're living in the last days. Those of us who care about the truth, if we listen to our heart of hearts, we know that this world has grown more wicked every day. We know that what is the norm today would have been outrageous just ten years ago. The world has become more and more wicked with every passing day. God is coming back. The Bible shows us clearly to watch for the signs of the times. We've been watching the signs of the times. Those who abide in God's Word all around the world have been watching the signs of the times. The signs of the times tell us that Jesus Christ is coming again soon. 
He came the first time to teach us the gospel message. He came the first time to lay down his own life to pay for our sins. When he comes again, he's coming to pour out his wrath upon this world. He's coming back to pour out condemnation. He's going to destroy, utterly destroy this world. Just as he did in the days of Noah. People were laughing at Noah when he took all those years to build the ark. But only eight souls were saved. Noah and his wife. Noah's three sons and their wives. Eight souls were saved. God utterly flooded this world. Science, true science, actually backs that up. The lies of the media will, of course, mock and scoff at the idea. The Bible also tells us in the days of Lot, the Bible tells us that Lot was a righteous man, a just man. The Bible tells us that just as in the days of Noah, similarly, in the days of Lot, Lot was told to leave the city of Sodom and Gomorrah, the city, that whole area. It was actually more than just Sodom and Gomorrah. It was Sodom and Gomorrah in the surrounding cities. An angel of the Lord came and warned him to leave with his family. The very day that they left, God rained fire and brimstone upon Sodom and Gomorrah and all the surrounding cities. Do you know what, ladies and gentlemen? There is that place in the Middle East you can go to today. That land is a barren wasteland. And do you know what? You can put your hand right into the walls and you can pull out whole chunks of sulfur. Do you know what another word for brimstone is, folks? Sulfur. In other words, the story of Lot in the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah is absolutely true. The Bible tells us that just as in the days of Noah and just as in the days of Lot, so too will the coming of the Lord be when he comes to pour out his wrath upon this world. But you know what? It's going to be far worse than anything that happened in the days of Noah. It's going to be so much worse than what happened in the days of Lot. Because God is going to come back and he's going to utterly destroy this world. And so it's up to each and every one of us. Are we going to choose life or are we going to choose death? Jesus Christ came to give us life. He died on the cross. He died a torturous death. He was nailed to the cross so that we can have our sins forgiven. Jesus Christ died a terrible, painful death so that we would have our sins forgiven. Everybody who calls out to Him, everyone who believes that He is the Son of God, call out to Him today, ladies and gentlemen. Call out to Jesus Christ and ask Him to forgive you. He is a just and merciful God. He will reach down in that very moment that you call out to Him confessing with your mouth that He is the Son of God, believing in your heart that God raised Him up on the third day. In that very moment, He will save you. He will forgive you your sins. It's why He came into this world. He came into this world to offer Himself as a sacrifice. Jesus Christ came into this world to offer Himself as a sacrifice. Jesus Christ is the blameless Lamb. He is the Son of God, the only begotten Son of God. He came to lay down His life so that we could live. And yet so many today in 2020 mock Him, spit upon Him, scoff at Him, reject Him, but He came and lived a terribly difficult life to offer us forgiveness. The Bible tells us He is the only way. He is the world Savior. He is the Redeemer. He is the Alpha, the Omega. He is the wonderful Counselor. He came 
so that we can live, that we don't have to die in our sins because without Christ, the Bible tells us we're dead in our sins today. Not some future point. The Bible tells us if we are not in Christ, we're condemned already. Read John 3.18. Read John 3.18 and you'll see that I'm telling you the truth. So we all need to make a decision. Are we going to come to Christ in truth and in faith? Are we going to ask Him in the privacy of our own homes? Ask Him to forgive us. Ask Him to show us His love. Ask Him to strengthen our faith. You can ask Jesus Christ anything you want because He loves you. He loves you. God loves you. Jesus Christ loves you. He wants to hear from you. Talk to Him. Ask Him. Ask Him to strengthen your faith. If you have a hard time believing that He is the Son of God, call out to Him and ask Him. Say, Dear Lord, increase my faith. Show me your love. Let me feel your presence. He's there waiting to hear from you, but He has to hear from you. He's not going to force Himself upon you. He wants to hear from you. You have to reach out to Him. You have to call out and say, Dear Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know that I am a sinner. Please forgive me, Jesus. Please forgive me my sins. And give me God's free gift of everlasting life. It's all we need to do. It's so easy. The church makes it complicated because the church wants your filthy lucre. The church makes it difficult because the church is run by a bunch of Freemasons. The church makes it difficult because they are working for Satan. But the Bible is so clear. It's so simple. We just have to call out to Jesus Christ and ask Him to forgive us. Dear Lord, we praise You. We lift You up. We pray, dear Lord, for this city, for this town of Milton Keynes. A great many people have heard the truth today. Father, we pray that through the power of the Holy Spirit that these people who have heard this message today call out to Jesus Christ and ask for forgiveness. pray, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, that the people of Milton Keynes call out to Jesus Christ for forgiveness today. Tomorrow might be too late. We pray that the people of Milton Keynes will pick up their Bibles and to begin to read God's Word. We pray that the people of this town will humble themselves. We pray that the people of this town will humble themselves and download a copy of the Bible to your smartphone today. Pick up a copy of the Bible today from the bookshop. Download it onto your phone. Begin to read the book of John. The book of John is a great place to begin. It will give you the gospel message. It will tell you about Jesus Christ. It will tell you the sort of person that Jesus Christ was and is and will forever be. Jesus Christ loves every single one of you. He's calling you back home. Jesus is saying, Listen, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father 
but by me. He's calling you home, but you need to go. You need to follow the way. You need to go into the straight gate. Narrow is the way that leadeth unto salvation. Dear Father, we pray that prayer in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen.